Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy, thanks for tuning in. So in this video I'm joined by Anthony from the YouTube channel Gems on VHS, as well as Sam Shackleton, also known as Sorely the Bard, who is a musician and has a Masters in Scottish Studies. Together we took a trip to a remote Bothy on the west coast to play some music and make a video discussing Highland Bards. Now a bard was basically a professional musician and poet, and was entrusted in keeping the clan traditions alive and as Gaelic culture was rarely written down and was instead passed on through word of mouth, a bar's job was actually very important, keeping this knowledge alive through the element of music and poetry. And many bars travelled far and wide sharing their entertainment, so we thought there was a nice crossover between my historical survival interests and Sam and Anthony's music expertise. So, without further ado, hope you enjoy the video. So, have you got any stories about bards? Yeah, well, one of the most fascinating things I heard about bards is oftentimes, and, and this is true for bards around the world, not just in Scotland, but they would remember an inhuman amount of uh, information, so mm. lines upon lines, thousands of lines of poetry, and they could recite it in one sitting if they needed to. And they had all sorts of techniques to memorise these long poems, but one of the most interesting techniques I heard of is they would go into a room a darkened room for hours on end with a big huge stone on their chest, a really heavy stone, and lie in the room for hours going over and over and over their lines and apparently something about the stone crushing their chest would help them remember all these thousands of words of uh, poetry and stuff. So yeah, the, the bards were really dedicated to remembering an inhuman amount of information so it was really almost mystical, you know, yeah. um, crazy. Well, students at home don't try that yes, at home. Yes, exactly. You might break some ribs. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do that for university exam one time. Yeah, uh, yeah. It didn't go too well. I ended up in the hospital. It's funny but... you say about the um, being in the dark room because I've heard stories of the poetry being a part of warrior culture. Right. What it meant to be a man. So not yes. only being good at fighting, but also being good at poetry. Yes. And um, as like a test of how good you were, they had to come up with a five minute poem without uh, writing and they would sit with the plaid over their head. Wow. And they'd just like go up somewhere in the woods or in the mountains and just put the plaid over their head so they're in the dark and they'd uh, create a five minute poem that they uh -huh. had to then go to yeah, an elder or chief yes, and recite yeah. it all. That sounds um, kind of similar. Yes, you know, it's all oral um, tradition. Yes. People weren't writing stuff down. So that was a big part of keeping the knowledge going. So yes. it is almost like rather than, you know, Proving someone and how good your mm -hmm. your writing skills are, it's how good your memory is, and how yes. and poetry is a way to memorize stuff and to convey information in a more entertaining way. I yeah, I like the idea of the carrying stream as well of folk mm. culture, of oral tradition. It was all a carrying stream, and the bards were just dipping their toes into the carrying stream. This is a Hamish Anderson uh, analogy. He called it the carrying right. stream, and yeah. everyone takes a, takes a piece out, puts it back in, and it's sort of stream that sort of yeah, flows so maybe in, in, a, and sort of, and in a way connecting with the carrying stream while they're yeah. doing the darkened room. Interesting. Yeah. So you call yourself Sorely the Bard, is that right? That is indeed you remind correct. me what a bard is. Barstoch in Gaelic means poetry and so a bard is essentially just a poet and um, they were oral historians throughout Scottish history and in later years they sort of became known as these itinerant musicians who who wandered around, that was more from the 15th century onwards. Right. But generally, every clan would have a bard that was the oral historian of the clan, um, generally speaking. And this guy would be responsible for uh, the chronicling of all the major events, the battles. They would sing uh, and write, compose panegric poetry, which is praise poetry to the chieftain and to the clan. They were like an early form of Google. So if anyone wanted to know something, <laughs> oh, tell me about the battle that happened several years ago. There's a well, I'll sing you a song about it and they, Instead they of play a, lake, a song. So you exactly. say bard, yes. tell me that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, so what's all this stuff here, my man? So this is all the kit. Um, that a typical 17th century traveller might have been carrying. We've got your uh, famous Scottish pouch called Sporran. Mm -hmm. Sporran just means purse in Gaelic. Um, this is my Tinder pouch. So all that is is just dry grass, um, various things to help my, get my fire going. It also helps to have some dry stuff. And um, not the Tinder of the people today, I think. Yeah, I know. Every time I teach survival courses to kids, everyone sniggers as soon as they see Tinder. <laughs> Kids and I'm no different. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, the sparring, various things. 
some cloth for tying up my socks. I haven't got that on yet. Oh. This is a little fire making kit. Oh, magic. Um, oh, cool. Now, we, again, with a lot of my kit, we don't exactly know what people are carrying. So I've had to kind of do educated guesses. I see. This is called a char tin. This is birch bark. So that's um, full of oil. So it's really um, good for getting fire going. Ah. It won't take a spark directly, but if you can get something going, then you can mm -hmm. feed it little bits of bark and it creates, wow. it's like a flame extender. I see. Um, so it's just a yeah, very handy way to light fires. Blanket pin, I can use that on my plaid. Yep. Um, if I got, I've got an extra wool blanket in there, I can use that to make a cloak. Ah. You can also use this to repair things, you know, to puncture right. poles, to, right. to sew stuff. You can also make a tripod by um, wedging three sticks into here and oh, pulling it out. Wow. And then you can make a tripod to hang your stuff from huh. the fire. Little, uh, it's your flint and steel. So that was your uh -huh. typical method to getting fire going. Wow. The sparks there. Um, get your fire going. Talking about bards. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. For, uh, a bit of morale. Music was a big part oh, of yeah. the culture. I'm sure lots of people could play. Most people sung Most, back in the yeah. day in Scotland. Yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, could do something. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, if you're sitting around the campfire looking after your, your cows or something, then it helps to have something to pass the time. Yeah, and what's quite interesting about music, you know, we were, we were talking about the other day is, you know, I'm kind of mainly focusing on short term survival, what's going to keep you going for the days to the months. When you're talking months to years, to me, music is one of those things that's about, yep. it's about the will to survive, the will to keep going, the morale of everything. And every society has music. And it's certainly, you know, that's why people have bagpipes before they go to war, yep. or they sing sad songs after a loss or something. There's something about music that um, allows humans to keep going. Yes. Um, so to me, yeah, this still, although it doesn't have a direct short-term survival aspect, if it can get your morale up, the will to survive and to have a morale, high morale, yes. is equally important. What it's were you knowledge. saying about the hierarchy of needs as well? I remember you mentioned something about that. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that was um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It doesn't uh -huh. have music in there, but it's just uh, um, a good way to think about human priorities. Uh, yes. pri priorities. And I guess most of my work, most of my courses are looking at that bottom level, shelter, water, fire, food. Yes. But when you're going after that, it's you know, company, it's um, meaning, it's uh, music, it's culture, it's uh, things that just makes life kind of worth living. Yeah. <laughs> and music, I'd say, is definitely up there. Yeah, that thing? I'm not very good Give at it. Give us a wee <laughs> So, uh, do you have any interesting stories about bards you can tell me? Bards? I actually I only have one story, and uh, um, it includes another subject that I'm very passionate about, which mm -hmm. is a good stick. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've got lots of videos on my channel about staff Indeed. martial arts, and yeah, there's a, there was a bard, um, I think from Balhuish, called Ian Lau, uh -huh. Bald Ian. Um, yeah, famous bard, and uh, apparently in the Battle of Inverlochy, uh -huh. he was about to get involved in it. And then one of the chieftains said, hey Ian, you can't get involved in the battle because if you die, who's going to write poetry about it? <laughs> so as the legend goes, he climbed a tree uh, and to watch the battle go on and was writing poetry. And some of the enemy clan were trying to get him down from the tree and he fended them off with a, with a staff, with a stick when he was on the tree. Wow. Um, and his staff is in a museum somewhere, I can't remember where. <laughs> If you want to see the full performance by Sam Shackleton, as well as many other great folk musicians from Scotland, Ireland and Appalachian America, then definitely check out Gems on VHS. Also check out Sam's page in the description below. If you want to support this channel and get monthly extra content, then please consider becoming a Patreon, also linked below. Thanks so much for watching folks and I'll catch you in the next video.